Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick. Today is Thursday, December the 15th. It's time for our daily devotion. We're moving along in Revelation, and today we are starting chapter 3, and we're covering the entire chapter. If you'd like to join me now in verse 1. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens no one can shut, and what he shuts no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have, so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen the faithful and true witness and ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All right, so we have the three remaining churches of the seven. We started to talk about the first four yesterday. And then today we conclude with the cities of Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Now, each of them has something specific about them that uh, God calls for them to repent of. And uh, at least the first two, God has a, um, a commendation for them. There is no commendation for Laodicea, and, and that is, is quite notable. So if you look at the first one, Sardis, it says they have a reputation for being alive, but they are dead. Uh, maybe meaning that the public perception of Sardis is that it's a, uh, a very alive and faithful church. Maybe they do a lot of mission work. Maybe they do a lot of charity. But uh, they're just going through the motions. There's not a real livable faith there. Um, you know, he does say there are a few there who have not soiled their garments and that they will walk with me. And, uh, what I noticed throughout all three of these cities is that there's a a baptismal reference that could be made with all three of them. And it mainly, uh, in the first two anyway, occurs through, uh, through a garment. Okay. And so the garment is oftentimes talked about as, uh, Galatians 3, 26 and 27 manner, that those who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And this image of the garment again reappears in Laodicea when it talks about them at the end of our reading today. 
as being pitiful, poor, blind, lame, uh, not lame, but, uh, but shamed. And uh, this reminds us of Ezekiel 16 when Israel was described as being the same way, that it was God who uh, found Israel and formed her and clothed her and made her beautiful, and then she, she turned away from him. And that exact sequence is, is talked about here with, with the church at Laodicea. Now, Laodicea was a sister congregation to the church at Colossae, which was one of Paul's letters, and one of his epistles was written there. Colossae and Laodicea were about 19 miles apart. And uh, uh, at the end of the book of Colossians, Paul directs the Colossians to share their letter with Laodicea and for the Laodiceans to share their letter with the Colossians. So we very much had a, a strong connection between the two cities here. And uh, the Colossians, Colossae is not mentioned here in Revelation as one of the seven churches. Laodicea, however, is, but it's, it's mentioned in the most harshest terms of all the seven, that it's lukewarm, that it, they're losing their faith, they're not hot or cold, they're just going through the motions, probably overcome by riches and, uh, and, and being spoiled, because some of these cities were quite well off. And, uh, and, and easily could absorb any kind of debt or any kind of uh, uh, inconvenience. Like it said at the time that there was an earthquake in the Roman Empire, and Laodicea may have been one of the cities that was able to rebuild itself without borrowing any money from, um, from Rome, right? And, and then uh, also going back to the second church mentioned here, Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. And uh, Philadelphia is talked about as having the key of David, uh, but they're dealing with people who claim to be Jews that are not. And so this may mean that they, they are being um, influenced or they are being visited by people who are Jewish, as we understand Jewish. But now, uh, to rightly be called a son of Abraham, that continues on through the ministry and legacy of Christ. And so that may be what he's saying there, that they're claiming to be children of Abraham, but they're not any longer. So it's, it is definitely some harsh language. Uh, there is a call for them to hold on to what they have and uh, that, that God will write his name on them. So there's the other baptismal reference to have the name of God written on you, uh, which he does in baptism and uh, which he also talks about doing here at the, uh, at the end of the age. And uh, the Laodicea image of baptism was the being clothed with a garment um, by God. So in, in all of these letters here, these three separate letters to these individual churches, you know, you have messages like repent and you will be restored. Uh, the emphasis here is on uh, being faithful despite the tribulation that's happening, despite the persecution that's happening. Um, there is this encouragement towards being faithful, right? And, and not giving in, not becoming lukewarm, not becoming immoral, not giving into sensuality, not giving into uh, any of the vices that were common to the Greco-Roman Empire, but being faithful because the time of testing is coming. And uh, whether that, that was meant to be a, a reference to Roman persecution, which did happen, or it's also a reference to persecution at the end of the age, right? When we expect um, the false church and uh, the government to come after us and to persecute us and we're called to remain faithful then. Really, these words are timeless, that they, they have referenced to their own time as well as to the time that is coming when there will be more of a end-of-the-age worldwide persecution. But we continue to cling to the cross of Christ, knowing that, that by the cross alone we're saved, only through the shedding of blood of Jesus do we have redemption deliverance, justification, and uh, atonement. So Jesus accomplishes all these things for us when he sacrifices himself, and then we're baptized into this. We uh, celebrate this in the new covenant when we uh, receive the Lord's Supper. So that is our lives as Christians, and also we, we have the calling to remain faithful to Jesus until he comes again. Okay, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you, give you his peace. Amen. Okay, uh, announcements for today. So uh, this Sunday is an important day because we're having um, the, the uh, Sunday School Christmas program at 6 p.m. Practice for this is going to start at 4, 4 p.m., I believe. Confirmation is also starting at 4 p.m. So uh, we invite you to... Uh, to come to this, uh, whether or not you have kids that are participating in it or not, we'd love to have the congregation just come out and see this. It's a beautiful retelling of the Christmas story with the kids singing hymns. And uh, we do have less kids this year participating, but uh, we have uh, Deaconess Elizabeth and, and some others working on a great program to present to you and uh, for the edification of your faith and uh, a proclamation of, of the Christmas story. Uh, this will be the last confirmation class for 2022 happening this coming Sunday at 4, not 6, but at 4 p.m. And then the kids are going to have off on both December the 25th, obviously, and January the 1st, which will be the next two Sundays. And speaking of Sundays, uh, Christmas Day service this year will be on, uh, well, Christmas Day. It's a Sunday, but it's going to be at 9 a.m. We're moving the service up an hour and a half. So please make note of that. And then the Christmas Eve services this year will be at 4 and 6 p.m. All right, uh, that's all the announcements I have for today. Thank you for watching our daily devotions. God bless this the rest of your Thursday. And uh, Deaconess Elizabeth will be here tomorrow, probably moving on to Revelation chapter 4.